When I read this comment by Activist News on my last video, it dawned on me that it was this man who was behind the confidence trick to get those who follow Brendan O'Connell to believe he was in a New Zealand prison. It was him in fact who announced on YouTube that Brendan O'Connell was missing and that he was worried about him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Activist News. Today I wanted to talk about something that's um, quite serious. I've been informed by someone, and again this isn't necessarily reliable information, it's been unconfirmed at this stage, but it's been suggested that Brendan O'Connell has been arrested in New Zealand. Um... This is what he wrote. First of all, you are a plagiarist. Secondly, he is in prison. Silly. We have paperwork directly from the prison which proves he is in the Immigration Department of Mount Eden, in Auckland. Also, did you try looking into Operation Tapiet for yourself? I'm going to guess not, because if you looked past the first page of the Jewish-controlled Google search result you would have found plenty of information regarding this practice, where the Israelis themselves admit to it. So you have essentially made yourself out to be either a shill or a fool. It's interesting to read that he claims to have paperwork directly from the prison. His follow-up video goes on to confirm that O'Connell is indeed remanded in Mount Eden Prison and that he has had a lengthy conversation with Brendan's lawyers, Kevin and Richard Foley. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Activist News. Today I just wanted to give you a quick update on Brendan O'Connell. Um, I've just got off the phone to his lawyers, uh, Richard and Kevin Foley. Uh, they tell me that they're going to keep me updated on the situation. I've got a page of notes here, so... Because um, it was a very long conversation and I can't show the recording of the conversation for legal reasons. This is a lie. Kevin Foley has never even heard of Brendan O'Connell, and even though there is a photo of Mr Foley on Brendan's blog page, he does not represent him, nor has he ever represented him. Kevin Foley's practice is in Wagga Wagga, which is about 2,000 miles from where Brendan O'Connell lives in Perth. Mr Foley's business is run by himself solely and there is no Richard Foley who is part of the practice. So I re-listened to the conversation, took some notes, and basically it's been confirmed uh, he is in custody in Mount Eden Prison, which is in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, he's currently being held in Raman, which is generally where they keep people who are awaiting trial, so it doesn't mean he's going to stay in prison there. That's generally where you go when, you're not, when you don't get bail, basically. This is my reply to Activist News. If you've got something solid on Operation Talpiat, which you call this practice, whatever that's supposed to mean, prove it and just send me a link and if it's legit, I'll remove this video. Now I've checked just about every which way and there is no legal criteria or cause whatsoever for him to be detained under the New Zealand Immigration Act 2009, S310. He has overplayed his hand like he normally does. He must think everyone's an idiot, thinking he can pull off this nonsense about being in maximum security with no access to the outdoors and fresh air, without a single facility. The conversation between you two was so staged that it was totally laughable. If you've got some documents saying he's being detained for any reason whatsoever, publish them in a video. You won't do it though because you don't have them, and if you do have something, they will prove to be fake and as phony as the man himself. How many years do you think he can dine out on hitting a Jewish boy across the face years and years ago? As for plagiarism, your video, which is linked in the information section, has Brendan telling you to record his call and get it out, that is make it public, to help him beg for money obviously. The other video is used by permission of the person he slagged off publicly. Activist News replies with the following statement, That's not me on the phone call. First of all, that's his lawyer. Lol, I've screenshot this and will prove you wrong. 
Prepare to be embarrassed and made to look foolish. You really should have looked a little deeper. When he wrote that that is not him on the phone but was in fact his lawyer, this is the phone call he was referring to. Yes, I have. I, and I've sent that, I sent that through to the Prime Minister as well. Right, but if you could get onto like, there's a guy called Nicky Hagar, he writes about my material, and try and get some people to come in when you can. But the biggest thing is, is that, A, I can talk with you, do an interview, and put the audio out, that they are detaining us in a highly high-risk environment, totally contrary to the United Nations rules on the treatment of prisoners and asylum seekers. All right, so Jacinta fucking Ahern is lecturing the Australian government when they hold us in maximum security facilities, no access to paperwork, no access to laptops, no access to any white legal material, nothing. In fucking Manus Island, they have mobile phones, access to the internet, printing facilities, photocopying facilities, cooking facilities, and they can walk around in the sun. We can't even see the sun. Yeah, I know. It's bullshit. Um, so you can embarrass the fuck out of the New Zealand government. Well, what I want to try and do is, obviously, before that happens, I want to, I want to exhaust all possible means of diplomacy and try and get some action out of the government. And now, I do have connections. No, no, you can't. See, legally, you can't, because I'm an asylum seeker from Australia. You can't have any access to them. Nothing to do with them. No, the government. If I put, if I put the put the argument to the government and say, look, this is out of order. Not the Australian government. No, that's zero. No, 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 no. New Zealand government. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to be. Well, key, I'm going to be. Spe- the key is that Carol opposes my warrant of commitment. That's all she has to do, and that's what she's supposedly organising. It's you bring a bit of pressure to bear, but really, it's up to the lawyer. Now wait on their activist news. Didn't you tell us that the man Brendan was talking to was his lawyer? But didn't we just hear Brendan say that? But really, it's up to the lawyer. You two are just not getting your stories straight. My response to your comment where you say, proof of the Talpiot program being legit, you dumbass. I say, the Talpiot program has been thoroughly dealt with in my video starting at 17.04. Click on the time to go there direct. You are being deliberately underhanded or stupid. It's both or one of the two. The Talpiot program is not a secret service intelligence operation with kill switches on foreign power grids, police phone systems, EFTPOS systems, ATM machines, train lines, wins payment software, Novo Pay, or even on the entire internet. Like Brendan O'Connell insists is what Operation Talpiot is all about. The Talpiot program, on the other hand, started in 1973 after the Yom Kippur War, and is an elite military unit pretty much like other countries' elite forces, such as the Navy SEALs, the Green Berets or the SAS. It has never been a secret intelligence unit. They are soldiers attached to the IDF. This is you being a deceiver and filling this comment section with useless links already mentioned in my video. Operation Talpiot is a story made up by the lying con artist, O'Connell. I will add, for the sake of the listener to this video, the first thing to notice is that you have deceptively changed the name of Operation Talpiot to the Talpiot program, having told me that if I'd looked past the Jewish-controlled Google search, I would have found plenty of information regarding this practice. Now, as I mentioned in my reply comment, considering that there is plenty of information offered up in my video about the Talpiot program, which is about the IDF Special Military Forces, and has nothing to do with Brendan's supposed Jewish intelligence arm of the secret services he calls Operation Talpiot, who he tells us operate high technology kill switches in every country and employ kill squads around the world, which he said were used in the Las Vegas massacre. Your proofs of the Talpiot program being legit, after calling me a dumbass, are nothing more than a link to a Wikipedia page about would you know it, the Talpiot program. So much for needing to look past Jewish-owned Google results. Your next few links are simply the same as offered up in my video obtained through a simple Google search. Now we come to the most important part, where you provide links to prove that Brendan O'Connell is in prison, and not forgetting of course, that you have already said that, 
He is in prison. Silly, we have paperwork directly from the prison which proves he is in the immigration department of Mount Eden, in Auckland. Now starting with your brief, but seemingly standard insulting reply, you say, proof that Brendan was arrested and jailed, you dumbass, you then provide us all with a link, giving us our first glimpse of the paperwork you received directly from the prison which you say proves he is in the immigration department of Mount Eden, in Auckland. This is the first link you provide which shows us a copy of the paperwork that was sent to you. Regarding this paperwork, the first notable oddity is that it is long and narrow, and quite unlike any normal letter that one would receive in the post. Let's read this as written, without adding or correcting any punctuation. Department of Corrections, we have now spoken with Mr. O'Connell who has consented to us advising you that he is currently being held in Mount Eden Corrections Facility. If you wish to contact Mr. O'Connell via mail, you can do so through the below address, Private Bag 92616 Simon Street, Auckland 1150. If you wish to visit Mr. O'Connell, he will need to provide you with the visitor application forms. You can find further information regarding contacting prisoners in the below links. I apologize for the delay in you receiving this information. Kind regards Ministerial Services, Department of Corrections Arapatamare Otirawa Mayfair House 44-52 The Terrace Private Box 1206 Wellington. Activist News, so you want me to actually believe this first link is the document you received from a government department. It reads like something written by a primary school child, or possibly someone who is as illiterate as Mr. O'Connell. No one would say, we have spoken to Mr. O'Connell who has consented to us, or word a phrase like, if you wish to contact Mr. O'Connell via mail, you can do so through the below address. The phony document is written with atrocious grammar. It ends with a postal private box address that doesn't include the postcode, which I've put in brackets. No government department would forget to include a postcode on printed mail or email correspondence. The so-called document is put together by a total amateur. No one would send a written document with internet links that are that long typed out on paper in color blue exactly like working links which would be sent in an email. They also look too bright to have been printed on paper. It includes a faint logo looking like it's been lifted off the Wikipedia web page. I've written out a ridiculous, unsigned document and I've included the links which couldn't be lifted off the page you sent. I got them from the exact same source as you did. The differences, mind work. People who read this can go and see where you lifted them from. How stupid do you think people are? Your first link, which is to the document you supposedly received from the Department of Corrections, is fake and proves nothing except that you're lying. Here is what this poorly written document you provided says. Department of Corrections, the letter neglects to address you personally, the recipient. We have now spoken with Mr. O'Connell who has consented to us advising you that he is currently being held in Mount Eden Corrections facility. This is so badly written it's almost nonsensical. If you wish to contact Mr. O'Connell via mail, you can do so through the below address. Again, it is badly written. Through the below address, should read, by writing to the address below, Private Bag 92616, Simon Street, Auckland, 1150. If you wish to visit Mr. O'Connell, he will need to provide you with the visitor application forms. So does Mr. O'Connell have his own supply of visitor application forms. You can find further information regarding contacting prisoners in the below links. Again, this should read via the links below. And what does it mean? Contacting prisoners. 
The letter is supposed to be about Mr. O'Connell personally, and not about prisoners in general, and you don't type out ridiculously long links in a letter and print them out in blue ink. This is why it is obvious that you lifted them off the government website. I apologize for the delay in you receiving this information, so now you have a personal apology from the unknown writer, who started the letter as, We. Kind regards ministerial services, there is no signature, Department of Corrections, Arapauta Mare Otiroa, Mayfair House, 44-52 The Terrace, Private Box, 1206, Wellington. This private box mailing address is missing the 6011 postcode. It is so patently obvious that this is a fraudulent document, put together by an amateur. Your second link is to the YouTube video that is supposed to be a conversation between Brendan O'Connell and his lawyer. Incidentally, as I've already mentioned, this video looks like it was made by the person who first announced to YouTube that Brendan had been taken into custody in New Zealand. Activist News Your third link gives us a look at what is supposed to be Brendan's handwritten letter to Carol that she has been asked to forward on to Kevin and Richard Foley. We don't know who this person Carol is supposed to be, but we do know that she was mentioned in the fake telephone call from the prison video. The next three links you provide give us nothing but the old story about when he was first convicted. Once again, you provide no proof. You have not proved that he is in prison anywhere, in particular, that he's imprisoned in New Zealand, where they would have no grounds to hold him for any reason whatsoever. It's absolute garbage, and you have just proved it, with your useless efforts at trying to convince me and others that this con artist is locked down in maximum security. He's free to do as he pleases. No one is after that loser for anything at all.